Greetings, greetings, greetings. This is a wonderful day to be breathing the breath of life. This is the day that he has made. We're here at Wildemar, California at the headquarters of the embassy in Southern Cal. We are House to House Discipleship Institute. My name is Menekem Yah, the Hebrew name, Apostle Dr. Robert Gonzalez. I want to thank you for tuning in. Uh, call a friend, let them know we're on. House to House Discipleship Institute is on. And we're going to carry over from what I did on Sabbath, talking about the tithe is a destroyer. I would like to take off so that way uh, some of you that listen to the terabyte tonight out of Romans 12, verse 3, uh, will put the tithe is a destroyer's part one to tonight's part so that way you'll get a little bit more understanding and you'll see the importance of um of how it is in the kingdom the kingdom works by merit seed time harvest works by the precious seed of the father that he even made you a seed <laughs> you guys remember that i mean I want to uh, see if I can really quickly go uh, to Scripture and see where it says. Uh, he says that the world is the field and the sons of God is the seed. See, so, yeah, the field is the world and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. But the tares are the children of the wicked one. Don't lose sight of who you are and then entangle yourself with the whispers of the enemy that comes in to tell you, ooh, 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 you, you, you're the wicked, you're the tares. He's talking about those that understand the parables of the tares. If you read, okay, let's start right there. Matthew 13, go with me to verse 35. Matthew 13, 35, and this is part two of the tithe is a destroyer. Some of you need to understand that your father has given you everything you need. I know one of the hardest things for all of us to live by is the, the life of giving. But you know, when you become really supernaturally adjusted to the scripture since uh, 2 Timothy 3, 15, 16, and 17 talks about the script, all scripture is inspired. I'm not going to. I'm going to go there, but I want to bring you back to Matthew 13. Then we'll go to Deuteronomy 18. But here's the principle. The tithe in your life was, as you heard, I said this on Sabbath, it was before the, <laughs> God, it was before the law, during the law, and after the law. Mm. It's always been a principle of kingdom, <laughs> kingdom economics. There's an economic balance in the kingdom, just like your bank account there's a balance in the natural molecular realm of existence if you have no money in the in your bank savings you can't withdraw any money do you see okay so in the kingdom since the father said you are my son i will supply everything to you during the time of the law, when Moses came and began to show man how important it was to fall under the law of, listen closely, spirit and truth, not the law of sin and condemnation. Because the preachers in Malachi, that was during the law period. Because we hadn't come into the Corinthians period where it's sparingly, Grudgingly or cheerfully. See, three realms again. Grudgingly would be out of court. I'm giving, but I really don't want to give. But you have no problem going to Starbucks, buying a double macchiato and two shots, you know, and then maybe a Danish. You follow what I'm saying? And then you go to work and someone offers you because the truck just, just happened to pull up 
you know, the roach truck and they, hey, you want some coffee, uh, Robert? Yeah. You want a Danish? Yeah. You just had one and you filled yourself with one more. And then you wonder, how hard is it for me to give? Okay, so now here in the kingdom, it's governed by seed, your precious seed, and merit. Okay, there was a time in, in scripture where they used the term grace and with grace, they started to turn a slant that said, it's unmerited favor. Well, wait a minute. Why would it be unmerited favor now if it was grace? Because those two terms were a definition of the word grace that took and removed favor. You were highly favored by the Father. The Father gave you everything you had need of. Now watch, Matthew 13. 25, uh, let's go 34, 35. All these things spake Yeshua unto the multitude in parables, and without a parable spake he not unto them, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, saying, I will open my mouth in parables, I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundations of the world. <laughs> when you understand the Kingdom economics has to do with seed and merit. In the world standard, it's your savings and your money. Mm. Because they make you save money because they learned how to get you to spend the money you've been saving by increasing, come on now, taxes, lifestyle, and uh interest rates on your home up or down you want to buy a home and the interest rates are high right now so then you go okay let's keep saving and wait so you're waiting and all of a sudden it comes back down now you're ready to buy because you're moving in the scale of what man lives by the father lives by kingdom economics concerning your precious seed and merit what do you mean? Okay, I'm going to explain to you. Here's the verse. Ooh, I can feel the Holy Ghost. The, uh, the Ruach Kadosh. Listen to the parable now. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophets, saying, I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundations of the world. Now, I remember a verse that the father spoke to Moses and said, one day a prophet will rise up among you. You remember, okay? So now, if you're reading scripture and you're Jesus conscious, you say, well, that was Jesus. No, Moses was talking about Joshua. Joshua would rise up and take the people over to the Jordan because Moses is he was the mediator of the law and he had to take you up to the Red Sea, cross the Red Sea, because that was an immersion. You're being immersed. Uh, you know, the Greeks used the term baptism and uh, they like to feel on the men and baptize feel on the women and baptize them. True immersion, you let the person go down on their own and come back on their own. And then because the power was on them, you'd help them and catch them because some of them could have drowned underwater. Oh, man, you didn't catch that. Thoroughly furnished. That's what Timothy says. That the man, woman, family of God is thoroughly furnished. That means in you, since we're the house, know ye not that you are the temple, that even the parables that a prophet would rise up and speak to... <laughs> Today, the scripture is prophetic, so you're understanding if you have a prophetic seed of the nature, character, and function of Echad, meaning the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. Now watch. You have uh, these, and, and will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundations of the world. Verse 36. Then Yeshua sent the multitude away 
Why did he send the multitude away? Because they only follow for the fishes and loaves, for the things they get free. Have you done any street evangelism? Everybody comes out for a backpack, a bicycle, a box of uh, canned goods, and then they leave and they don't. you don't see them in church till the following two, three, four months. You're having another rally and they come out and they already got six or seven uh, backpacks that they gotten from your outreach. And then if you go during the midsummer days of winter or summer, they have a garage sale and your backpacks are being sold. I'd say you don't want to hear the truth, but you know that's what's happening. So then he says in verse 36, Then Yeshua sent the multitude away and went into the house with his disciples and came unto him saying, Declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. Wait, wait a minute, the tares of the field. Well, first you got to know what a field is. So in, in Hebrew, the ox, Aleph, ox, plows with a plowing. Oh God, what's the, what's the letter for uh, the samik? A, a zadik, zadik, a plowshare. A plowshare. Uh, a plowshare. What's the term, Virg? I forget. The plowshare. I don't have my notes. Anyway. It's, it's the third, fourth letter of the Aleph Tav. Okay, so now the ox is pulling the plowshare in the ground and it's opening, it's turning the earth so that the farmer can plant seed. That's the field. The field has to be plowed so that the roots of other types of tares that grow in the land, in the dirt, can be dried and die through the sun. Okay, so now here he says to you and I, uh, and his disciples came into him saying, declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. He answered and said unto them, he that sows the good seed is the son of man. man. Okay, so here it is, the son of man. If you read your Bible, he's called the son of man the son of David, and the son of God, or Yahuwah, okay? Boom. So now, you and I, if you were with us on Sabbath, you heard me say the tithe is a destroyer. Tonight, I'm reaffirming and giving you water in the desert. I'm giving you a refreshing, a reconciliation, a restoration of the word that is working mightily in you since you are his workmanship, created in one Yeshua Mashiach. So then he begins and he says in verse 37, He answered and said unto them, He that sows the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world. Wait a minute, you just said that the ox plows with a plowshare and then plants seed. Yes, but, <laughs> but if you have the Holy Spirit, the Ruach Kadosh, through prayer it begins to plow the hearts of mankind so when you come around them and you plant a merit wow. Romans 6 11 go over there Romans 6 11 let's see the what Romans 6 11 has to say hallelujah thank you I'm glad you guys are with me likewise reckon ye yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin but alive unto God through Yeshua Mashiach let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that's you, the field, that you should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto Yahuwah as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God." For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but un under favor. My God, that's good. So what am I saying? I'm saying the tithe is a destroyer. You're being prepared in the higher level of the teaching from house to house. The third dimension is the kadosh or set apart or holy of holies. You become the tithe. You become the offering. What do you mean? Well, don't you have a spirit? Don't you have a soul and you live in a body? 
the realm of the body is the offering to the poor and the needy. The realm of the 60-fold, the soul, is your attitude, your way of thinking. You're not bound by sin, therefore your conscience is without condemnation. So when you're walk, when you're part of an outreach on a weekend, you have the mind of Mashiach and you're making faith people feel comfortable around you you're not preaching sin oh my goodness you know that we be preaching sin at them outreaches ah mm. uh, come on family hallelujah but if you preach the righteousness of yah in mashiach now you're letting them know the mystery of the parables that the father said i'm going to give you the understanding of the mysteries once you were lost, but now you're found. Once you were blind, but now you see. The field is the world. Hallelujah. Come on, world. And the seed are the children of the Most High, Yah, <laughs> you and I. So the tithe, I'm trying to bring you to an understanding. The tithe is a destroyer because now you've taken the giving of the outer court, Passover, Passover, the death angel passed over you, did not take your, uh -huh, your money, your job, your sickness, or gave you sickness because the death angel passed over. In the holy place, the 60-fold, now you have the proper attitude. You yield your members unto righteousness. You're not under condemnation and sin consciousness because that's what we do. We preach sin. And then you come into the Holy of Holies and your spirit man is the hundredfold. Your spirit man is the tithe. Your offering is your soul. Your money, which let me help you here, as you come into kingdom understanding, money becomes seed. Hallelujah. Come on, family. Money becomes seed. In the holy place, now it's no longer money. It's you're yielding your members as an instrument of righteousness. Everything you think about is right in the right standing or right in the right attitude on how to present the gospel of the kingdom. You're not a sinner. You're already saved according to the Father's plan of eternal salvation. That's why salvation has three realms, common, Great and eternal. And you'll find that in the book of Jude, the book of Acts, and the book of Hebrews. Okay, I'm not, I want to get to the tithe as a destroyer. Now listen to me carefully. He's telling them in verse 58, the field is the world. Everybody needs to go out there and plant the seed. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. Whoo, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. Well, what's the tare? Those are associated to wicked things. You want to get high. You want to take five or six boxes, have three or four or five backpacks, seven bikes, a bunch of hats and shirts and socks, and then have your own garage sale. That's a thief. Your seed and your life, if you're not careful, becomes a curse. And if you plot to do those things, you're cursed all the time. You're working for your paycheck and it doesn't seem to what? Doesn't seem to meet all the need. You don't, you, see, your need, N-E-E-D, became so big you can't fill the different parts of that need. But when you submit with the proper heart and the tears that try to tear your mind apart by making you think evil, all of a sudden your focus and your seed, the amount you make because you're becoming true to the gift of giving. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. The tithe becomes a destroyer of all the things that may come against you as a believer. He said only believe. Keep my commandments and you shall do the work of a disciple if you just believe. Okay? And if you do that, then watch what happens. Here, verse 37 and 38 he that sows the good seed is the son of man. He's talking about Yeshua Mashiach. Or in the Greek, they use the term Jesus Christ. 
All scripture, listen to 2 Timothy 3.16 and 17. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Mm. That the man of God, the woman of God, the family of God be made perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works in the kingdom. Do you know that there's vessels of honor and dishonor in the kingdom? I mean, I don't understand it either, but the Father so loved me while I was a sinner. And his love changed me. His love began to work deeper in me. And I had no choice but to change and begin to think the way he wanted me to think. Okay, the connotation of that verse that you and I just read in 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, the connotation is you inhale the thoughts of your father. And as you're inhaling the work in you, you exhale all the debris, all the toxin, all the tears, all the sickness, all the anxiety, all the coughing, all the stuff that comes against you, but you've got to tap the realm of the spirit man in you. We can say yes and have a form of godliness, but deny the power that is released in you just by thinking on the verse 316. All scripture is inspired by Yah. 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 Ya. Be healed. In the name of Yahuwah, Mashiach. Woo, hallelujah. I felt that. I'm sorry I had to go there. This word is God indwelling you because he wants you to understand if you become his tithe, nothing can be held back. The tithe is a destroyer. I'm destroying the works of sin and darkness right now while I'm speaking and you're hearing it. Woo. Nobody can help me or you. You got to take the word and evaluate it inside of you and begin to work in a deeper form, a deeper form of transformation. In conclusion, if you don't allow the word to work mightily in you, then the word becomes dormant in you and you don't have the attribute of having the tide to become your destroyer. Matthew, I mean, uh, Numbers 18, and we're done. I got a couple minutes. Let me get over the numbers. Hallelujah. There it is. Whoo. Thank you, Father. Watch this. Watch this. Okay? And I'm going back to the tithe is a destroyer. You know how to give. Some of you are at that mature level where you can begin to renew and renovate your mind and thinking. You mean I'm the tithe? Yes, your heavenly father has invested the life of the son, the only begotten who went to Calvary's cross. <laughs> and show you that one man can die for his sin. Every man has to die for his own sin. Nowhere in the scripture did he say one man came to deliver you all mankind. No, one man came to show us the example that the Father's favor, unmerited favor, the Father's favor is on you and I and in, oh my God, he embellishes you with the incorruptible word. You are born by the incorruptible word. You maintain by the infallible word. And the, and the, who, the, what's that other one? And, infallible, uh, incorruptible, and, and the, counsel. and the determined, that's it, the determined counsel of the word in you works so mightily that when the wind comes, you just stand like a tree and begin to sway and worship with your father. Because <laughs> the palm tree, the palm tree doesn't break under the wind, under the storm. You stand strong, hallelujah, because that's who you are. You're a son. The tide destroys. 
The tithe destroys. The tithe is a destroyer over every area in your life. If you can get a hold of this and see it, you're going to see more and more. The Word, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with Yah, and the Word was Yah, and Yah abides in you forever. I will never leave you nor forsake you. That's what he said. Now look at in the book of Numbers how he says to you and I, since according to the scripture in Peter, you're a peculiar people, a holy nation, and a royal priesthood. Hallelujah, okay? Verse 25, And Yahuwah spake unto Moses, saying, Thus speak unto the priesthood, the Levites, and say unto them, When you take of the children of Israel the tithe, which I have given you from them for an inheritance. Okay, he's talking to Moses. He's saying, Moses, this is going to be for you. I have given you from them for your inheritance. Then ye shall offer up a heave offering of it for Yahuwah, even a tenth part of the tithe. So Moses, I'm like a Moses to those that I have influence over, to those that I pray for, to those that are part of, right now you're part of. So there's 10 of you, a 1,000 of you. It doesn't matter. What matters are you learning that you have the opportunity to take the inspired word, the infallible word, the determined counsel of your father and allow yourself to become the tide that destroys the tide destroys if you can see that you are the tithe and if you live upright before your father in the beginning was the word and the word was with Yah, and the word was Yah, and he abides in you In the beginning was the word, and according to Genesis 1, let there be light, and light is still expanding. And the kingdom is right next to, shoulder to shoulder. The kingdom and light are expanding, continually expanding. Why? Because there is a group of priests after the order of Melchizedek. They understand how to do the tithe. Watch verse 27. And this, your heave offering, shall be reckoned unto you as though it were the corn of the threshing floor and as the fullness of the wine press. What's he mean? He says you're giving to the Father by giving to your apostle, your Sheliak, your Navim, your prophet. Hallelujah. Your teacher will keep you in a place where poverty can't touch you, sickness can't touch you. You got to fight through this. You got to tell those symptoms that come up on you. Stop in the name of Yeshua. If you don't do it, no one else will. Because here's the principle you got to work out. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Every man in his own likeness has to die to his sin. Every man. Every man. I know we've been so messed up. We said one man. No, every man. That's what it says in Scripture. We'll go through it, and you'll be astounded when you hear it. Now, let me finish. 28. Thus you shall also shall offer a heave offering unto Yahuwah of all your tithes which you receive of the children of Israel, and you shall give thereof of Yahuwah heave offering to Aaron the priest. Out of all your gifts you shall offer every heave offering of the Yahuwah of all the best thereof, even the hollow part thereof out of it. Why is it the hollow part? Well, if you turn to Matthew 6, 33, you'll hear the model prayer on how to pray. Teach us how to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, how be your name. Hallow be your name. What, was, what were they saying? They were saying, we're praying about you, Father. The best is what I'm referring to. I cannot forget who you are and what you've done for me. You promised me you'd never leave me nor forsake me. Therefore, the steps of a good man are ordered 
by Yah. I lean not to my understanding, but in all thy ways I acknowledge you. Thy word is a lamp, thy word is a light unto my path. I will not be lost. I have focused on you, and therefore I'm the head, not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. You said if I plant my precious seed to you, I'll get a return of some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. Man shall give unto you, pressed down, shaking, and running over. Ha, ah, come on, family. That's in the book of Luke. You'll find that in 6, uh, 18 or 6, oh, 1. Yeah, thank you. And I'll turn there and we're done. Let me find Luke. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall man give unto your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured to you. See, one of the things we taught you is if you don't give, you're in sin. No, you're beginning to learn. You're the tide, so you will live the lifestyle of giving. And then you'll never lack. But if you, now watch, if you give under obligation, you're under condemnation. If you give out under obligation, you're under condemnation. The father said, give. And he said, how many times? He said, three times, gather all the males. Even the females, because they have a, a spirit. Their spirit, soul, and body. And three times, give a gift, don't come empty, empty handed. Here at House to House, we give Passover, Pentecost, Tabernacle. And then if you want to tithe, you tithe from what you make. But now watch this. We're growing. So I'm telling the people as we grow, give from not condemnation. Give from your heart, not obligation. Give out of the love of who you are and whose you are. Are you becoming the son? This is my beloved son whom I'm well pleased. And then he goes on, he says, hear ye him. Press down, shaking and running over, man shall give unto your bosom. With the same merit or meat that is meat out, that's what will be measured back to you. Until we see each other again, I'm a Nekum, yeah, Dr. Robert Gonzalez, your Sheliac, your apostle from the embassy in Southern California, bringing to you a, <laughs> a spiritual devotional called The Tide is the Destroyer. Can you imagine that? The Tide is your destroyer. You tithe, Father destroys the devourer. Don't forget, hit the like button, hit the comment button, listen to Isha Speaks, listen to In Tune with the Triune, and then come back and follow with us on every Saturday, our Sabbath. We do honor the Sabbath, and we do know the Sabbath was made for man or was man for the Sabbath. You have to figure that out. There's no condemnation whether you keep it or you don't. What you'll see is a great influx of revelation knowledge that hits you in your heart. Until we see each other again, I'm once again, Dr. Gonzalez, love you all. Tell a friend to all of you that are connected. Remember, we put a cash, ca uh, cash app and it's uh, RV Gonzalez. It should have been just the R Gonzalez, but anyway. We'll get all that, we'll bring it up to a standard of understanding. And just remember, if you give, we continue to give in, as the whole in Yahoo's name. Until we see each other again, Shalom.